hope everybody had a good lunch and great break with our artistic experiences. Uh, so this is the last um, session for today. And we have two presenters, like this morning. The first will be Dr. Baptiste Bar Barbeau, who uh, has just moved from New York City and Pace University to Belgium, uh, so much closer to here, to Catholic University of Louvain. Close enough? Um, and uh, he uh, studies developmental and individual differences, psychology, uh, and different topics around development of creativity and uh, how uh, creativity relates to development of identity and self. Um, our second presenter today is going to be Dr. Maria, Maria Dolores Prieto from University of Murcia, and she is a professor of educational psychology. Uh, she has held numerous uh, positions and research appointments across uh, uh, four different countries and continents, uh, and uh, her research is around intelligence, emotional intelligence, uh, and scientific creativity in children and adolescents. Uh, and here I invite our presenters, uh, like a format this morning, each of them will have 20 minutes, and then we'll have 20 minutes for discussion and questions. Welcome. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? You hear me, right? Otherwise you wouldn't say no. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's going to be uh, challenging to uh, present um, academic presentation after this wonderful artistic experience you had. Uh, but we'll try to make it not too boring. Uh, so first of all, I wanted to uh, really thank the organizer of the conference. It's really a great uh, honor to, uh, to be here. I know that it's been a lot of work that you guys put together since a few years, so it's really, I'm really honored to be here. And um, additionally, I'm very happy to be back here in Santander. I was uh, here over 20 years ago, and I have to say that the city is much better now that there's a central button. Um, so today I'm going to talk about uh, the development of uh, creativity in uh, children and adolescents. And I'm sure everybody here uh, noticed that creativity is on the map since a little while. Uh, so for example, uh, this uh, P21 a partnership for a 21st century skill has included creativity as part of the main skills to be developed in children. Um, this is another 4C model uh, here. Um, or more recently, um, the OECD um, PISA program has included creativity as part of the skills that will be uh, compared across many countries in the world. And we will have about half a million teenagers being assessed for creativity and compared across the world. So that shows a little bit like the sort of the social importance of creativity. And the point I wanted to make is that um, in many good creativity papers, there's always this first line that creativity is so important to develop, uh, it's so important for future generation, and we're going to think about that, what does it mean, and what, why is that so important to develop creativity as well today. So uh, it seems to be even more important that sounds like creativity is in the middle of a crisis. I'm sure some of you have heard about that. Um, so this is sort of a study that made a buzz about 10 years ago, uh, published in uh, uh, the Newsweek, this idea that creativity is declining among Americans. What did we do wrong? How can we fix it? Right? It's pretty dramatic. And this was based on a, a study uh, published uh, uh, in the Creativity Research Journal by Kim. And essentially what she did is uh, compare the norm data of um, a popular uh, test for creative thinking, the Torrance test for creative thinking. And so to um, evaluate performance on this test, we need a lot of people to complete the test so that we can compare one given individual to that norm. And so she compared the norms over the years, so that looks like this table of descriptive statistics, but it's obviously uh, nicer if we look at it visually. So that looks like that. In fact, uh, she doesn't really mention that this sort of a peak in the 90s and then 
indeed it seems to decline. But there's something a little wrong in this picture. Um, first of all, the spacing between the years is not really equivalent. You see, between 74 and 84, there's 10 years, but between 84 and 90, there's only six years, but this is the same spacing. So we can fix that. I've done that for you. So that looks more something like that, in fact, if we were to just adjust for the time, um, year by year. But there's another other little issue here is that the, the entire scale of the score is not very well represented here. So I also fixed that for you. And that looks more something like that. <laughs> All right? But this is still an um, average effect. In fact, with this average trend, doesn't account for all the individual differences, meaning some people score low, some people score high. And so to represent that properly, we should also account for the standard deviation around. So here we have essentially 95% of the population that is situated in that creativity test between that gray line and that orange line over the years. So it's not too sure whether there's a very clear decline here. Would you agree with that? However, the way we package the information, the left side, the right side, makes a very different news uh, week uh, <laughs> cover, I guess. Um, the point I wanted to make today is that this is a, a, a study that is widely cited. As of yesterday, it had almost 600 citations. Um, and so we really think that we are in this crisis and we need to save creativity, but I'm a bit more hopeful on that side. I think there's not such a crisis and creativity is doing pretty good. Another th um, point that I wanted to make about this study is that it looks a little bit like creativity is one thing, right? There's one trend here, the development, developmental trend. And this is maybe due to our consensual definition of creativity, which is the ability to produce work that is original, new, and task appropriate. We already discussed that. Pre pretty much everybody agree about that. But what's not too discussed is that, is it really the ability? The idea of the ability is a bit like, creativity is a bit like weight or height, and we could quantify it like that linearly, like we would measure weight or height, and that would be a one unitary construct. And this is probably a, a um, wrong representation of what is actually creativity. It's much more complex than that. Um, so here I'm going to introduce this more multivariate or componential view that we already have touched upon this morning. This is the idea that creativity is the result of many factors that come into play in the creative work. And so these factors include aspects of cognition, um, including, of course, divergent thinking, which is a factor that we already talked about a bit today, um, domain-specific knowledge. There's also, of course, more cognitive or affective factors, including personality-related um, uh, traits, motivation, and, of course, emotions. And we have also the environmental factors, which, are, which is just not um, the number of trees that are around you when you do creative work, but also the kind of environment in which you are, the culture, the um, spe specific um, uh, culture of a school or a family. So all these factors come into play, and that's them that together makes the creative potential of a person for a specific task or domain. So let me explain that a little bit. In fact, if we compare the creative work in creating a, a symphony as opposed uh, to writing a little poem, this is completely a different creativity there, right? It's not, we're not to talking really about exactly the same phenomenon. It's, there's many ingredients that are different for the two types of tasks. So according to our profile of resources, whether we're more or less open to experience, whether we're more divergent and so forth, that will create more or less good condition for, uh, poten uh, for, for creativity in a specific task or domain. So I will expand on this idea um, a little bit on a, a more developmental perspective now. So again, we're talking about potential, but that doesn't mean that this potential we conver will convert into actual creative products. Okay, so that's also an important piece. The potential has to be enacted, has to be transformed into a creative production. So you can have very high potential for creativity, but never use it. 
In contrast, you have some people who have a lot of accomplishments, creative accomplishments, without a very high creative potential, right? All good so far? Oh, yeah. So um, what I'm highlighting here is that the main way uh, we have operationalized creativity in the field, in research on creativity, is by measuring a very specific aspect of cogni cognitive factors important for creativity and not something that capture the entire phenomenon, which will be probably impossible. But once again, the way we've operationalized that complex phenomenon is just by tasks that measure divergent thinking, which is a very specific aspect of creativity. So specifically, this is the ability to generate original solutions to a single problem or stimulus. We've, we saw an example this morning. I'm going to give you another one. Uh, so this is a task with incomplete shapes, here cycles. And in a given set time, people have to generate as many original drawings that complete, complete the cycles. So you can think about what you can do with that. Probably you have the most obvious answers that are coming to your mind. If you think a bit longer, you might find things like that. This is responses that uh, are coming from a sample of uh, uh, French teenagers. And here is another sample. And typically what we are measuring here is sort of the quantity of ideas, of response more exactly, and uh, the variety of responses and obviously their originality, which is often operationalized by how rare is a given answer in the tested population. So once again, between this and a creative product, there's a big gap here. There's many other steps that are important to make the creative work happen. Uh, more recently, I proposed sort of a, a 2.0 version of this kind of task, a, a digital assessment that helps actually track the response process so we can measure the relative effort that is needed to generate ideas of different level of originality. And the advantage of this approach is we can model for each individual the sort of original cost, that is how much time it's needed for a person to reach a very high level of originality. So it's a sort of a, a bit more fine-grained view of that perspective, but still we're tapping into a very, um, not minor, it's a very important aspect, but a tiny piece of what the creativity phenomenon is. So as a consequence, with that in mind, what do we know about the dev development of creativity? What we know is mainly about the development of divergent thinking, because that's the tools that we've been using for many years to study creativity. What we know also is that uh, it's an irregular process, so it's not linear, the development of this uh, uh, divergent thinking ability, and I'm, I'm going to introduce that uh, in greater detail now. And of course, it's multifaceted and domain-specific phenomenon. So with respect to uh, the development of divergent thinking, there is a very uh, influential uh, line of study which was introduced by uh, Torrance in the 1960s, which is this idea of creativity slump. So in his research, he showed that uh, at around fourth grade, which is about nine years old, there is a temporary decline of creative performance in the kind of task I showed you just before. Okay, so kids in fourth grade are not as good as kids in third grade or kids in fifth grade. Okay, so this is idea of temporary decline. Uh, so that has stimulated a lot research in, um, the the, on the development of creativity. And unfortunately, this has not been very consistent. So some studies have showed a peak of divergent thinking as opposed to a slump. Some other studies have showed that there is a slump a bit later in the development. And all of this viability was due to, for example, culture. So according to the culture, the, the slump might happen at a different time or not happen at all. Um, could vary according to the type of pedagogy that the, the kids are in. So whether it's a Montessori or a more specialized type of pedagogy or just the classic pedagogy. And also the way we measure that thinking. This is not the tribal issue. Um, and of course, according to what aspects of creative potential or of divergent thinking, we could say, we're looking at. So these are many, many examples. So recently, we've conducted a meta-analysis of, of 40 studies uh, plus that have studied this creativity slump, or divergent thinking slump, more exactly. 
So the meta-analysis sort of synthesizes all of this literature and all these results, uh, past results, to see whether there's actually slumps. And uh, what we found is, uh, as you can see here, that there is this general upward trend. So on average, sort of, there is an increase of data-driven thinking over the years. That is pretty much established. We also see that this development is quite irregular, so there's also some period of uh, uh, decrease and increase, but only one was significant, which is the one around seventh grade, which is about 13 years old. Okay, so that's, that's the only one that we found were actually significant across the studies. Uh, I'm not going to go too far into the detail of this study, but and some of the factors that explain why they are slump or not, and that showed to be significant, including the domain of the task, so once again, that shows that the development of creativity, say, or, or at least divergent thinking in verbal tasks is different than in graphic tasks, all right? So we cannot use them interchangeably, these tasks. They all measure something somewhat different. Um, and also intellectual uh, abilities. So studies that were looking at uh, gifted students usually tend to not uh, capture uh, slump at the same time as those uh, with sample of normal range IQ. So all of that is nice, but it tells us again, once again, about average trends. It doesn't really tell us about, at the individual level, how does really creativity develop. So we're going more now in individual differences in the development of creativity. So there is this quote that I really like from Simon Tom, which is a work that brings its creator unprecedented acclaim, may be followed by an embarrassing fiasco. So this is more for eminent creativity or say big C creativity, but that's also something that can be found in sort of the general public. And this is much in line with uh, early conceptualization, notably by Gifford, who said that creative people differ considerably in performance from time to time. So how do we capture all these changes? How do we account for all these changes or of this viability? In fact, there's several factors that may account for these individual differences in sort of the rates of change and speed of change and trajectories of, of developments. The environmental influences, uh, for example, uh, there's a lot of school transition, like kids change s uh, schools when they go uh, from, I mean, it depends on the countries, of course, but when they go from primary to secondary school, and these changes often are associated with declines in uh, creative performance because we're a bit in a context where we have to conform to a new school environment, to make new friends, and this is sort of conductive or more conformism rather than uh, or uh, creative thinking. Um, specialization of interest, so that's something that so kind of uh, is more for, especially adolescents. In adolescents, there's sort of like a re, a sort of a pruning of, of, of the uh, former commitments, and the adolescents tend to focus on new uh, domains of interest, and so that might also sort of specialize the creative potential during that period of time. And another uh, um, factor that can explain that is the asynchronicity of creativity resource development. So that's not a little complicated, but in line of, uh, with what I explained earlier, that creativity is the, uh, the results of many factors that developed at different rates, we can have a very different profile of performance according to when we look at this profile. So I have illustrated that here. Uh, so this is completely fictive. This is sort of the developmental trajectories of uh, four resources important for creativity. So here I took divergent thinking, motivation, domain-based knowledge, and openness. So we can imagine that over the development of a child, these different factors develop at a different rate, different speed, there's peaks, there's slumps, and so forth. And as a result, if we look at the profile of the child on these resources at, say, six years, it's a very different profile than, say, at 13 years, okay? So as a result, and according to the ta task that we consider, here I'm illustrating two tasks, say, my music composition task and my poetry task. These two tasks require very, a very different set of factors, right? One task might require much more divergent thinking than the other. All right. So according to the tasks that we consider, the creative work, 
that uh, the child is involved in, we could have more or less fit between the individual profile of resources and the demand of the task. So here, for following my uh, illustrative example, for that same child, the potential for creativity is much higher for, say, the composition task, the music composition task, at eight years old or nine years old, whereas uh, the optimal pot potential for creativity for the poetry task will be around 14 years old. So all of that is fictive, but I can help understand why the development of creativity, first of all, is not linear and is also mainly domain-specific. Um, so sort of a, a take-home message of uh, this line of work is first that I'm sure you understand that creative potential is not multifaceted but multifaceted <laughs> for those who catch the typo <laughs> uh, and domain specific to not say task specific the good uh, news about that particular uh, point is that if you f try to track the development of creativity in a given domain say you're interested in painting uh, and you see that a child doesn't have a very high potential for, or doesn't score very high, or doesn't show very great creative outputs in that painting task, maybe you should find a domain or a task that works better for that person, for that particular profile of resource that that person has. Now, in terms of predicting real-life creative productions, of course, that's something we don't know too much about children and adolescents, because it's very rare that a child or an adolescent will produce something that is groundbreaking, right? So we, we tend to study more the potential in children and adolescents than the actual out creative outputs. Um, of course, keep in mind that creativity needs enactment. So you can have a very high potential, but never use it. So we can encourage children, parents and educators can do that, encourage uh, children and adolescents to use their potential. Um, to make it work, uh, of course, the, the child or adolescent needs to have interest in the particular domain, and that interest needs to match, in a way, there needs to be a good fit with their own potential for creativity. The last and final point here is about this creativity crisis. I just wanted to uh, step back a little bit and uh, think about you know, creativity as such an important skill and kids being the future of humankind that needs to be creative to solve the problem that we put them into, right? So it's perhaps, um, I don't want to be pessimistic, of course, uh, we all want to improve creativity in children and there's a million reasons why we should do that, but I think it's very important to think sometime, why are we actually doing that? Again, uh, I often see this uh, idea that we will make the kids more creative so that they will solve problems that we are not able to solve and that most of the time, you know, I mean, we broke the planet, right? But they have to deal with that creatively, right? So that's a big responsibility for kids who already have a lot in their plates. Thank you for your attention. Buenas tardes. Soy Lola Prieto. Good afternoon. I am Lola Prieto. Profesora emérita de la Universidad de Murcia. Meritus profesor at Murcia y University. Mi intervención de esta tarde and my presentation this afternoon por el, la parte de la emoción y la creatividad. Emotions and creativity. This is a study carried out with adolescents in the south of Spain in Murcia region. And the si hay idea is to si see whether there is a relation if emotions Emotional intelligence can predict creativity and what are the results, the findings that on many occasions are not as positive as we expected, but this is how research studies are. Sometimes we comply um, or fulfill our hypothesis and sometimes we don't. Bueno, nosotros nos pen la primera cuestión no, que nos hicimos o the first question estudiar si realmente hay idea esa was to study que autores whether there was a relationship that authors as Herer 
and el header mismo Kaufman dice and que Kaufman sí que hay una relación state, incluso que se puede predecir that there is a relationship de esta manera and that we can la predict creatividad a partir de la inteligencia emocional creativity based on emotional intelligence Porque that was esta, our starting point there is this um, assumption del campo de in the field of emotional intelligence con and creativity en mente, With this idea in mind, we first analyzed de the different yo no voy models of uh, emotional intelligence. No I'm not going to explain de, them now because this is not the diálogo. topic of my presentation, y maybe at a Q&A. Depende But los resultados, cosa the curiosa, findings del modelo que se depend on the model used in si, our ejemplo, research study. If we use the Mayer Caruso, Mayer Caruso and Salloway model with the famous MISCE uh, tool, the no results are not as positive as expected by the Parece researchers themselves. It seems to be the case that data based on mixed models with inventories as Baron uh, give some results that are easy to predict. And there is a third model designed by Petrides, a professor working at London University that has more to do with personality trait, uh, linking creativity with personal traits. This is the ability model where emotional intelligence is assessed to some tasks and real problems of real life en, son las cuatro ramas and la capacidad para identificar the four branches de capacity to identify emotions to use them to understand the emotions no and to handle them uno, not only our own emotions las personas but con las cuales uh, se convive. people's emotions eh, los autores de este modelo the authors of this model understand que that there are cognitive processes underlying emotional intelligence, from the most simple to the el, most sophisticated ones. El, Now, el de the problem of the measurement instrument is that we need some experts that have to reach a consensus in the scoring, but today we have a Eh, de different uh, evaluación, evaluation grids, so things uh, will not get too complicated. El que nosotros, mm, Now, the model we use is Barron's for different reasons. The first, Ferrando, because Mercedes Ferrando autor, contacted eh, the author, we translated a, and adapted país, the model to our country. In fact, has pedido. the copyright es now, and this is a um, a model based on self-reporting and therefore the child or children can self-assess how they perceive their emotional intelligence. And it also has the advantage that there is a questionnaire for the parents and another one for teachers. So we can get three different information sources that are quite relevant and have an idea of how emotional intelligence is present in uh, children and adults. It has five scales, inter and intra personal ones. They are taken from multiple intelligence uh, gardeners and multiple intelligence. And already in 1920, we already talked about the two intelligences that take part of social intelligence. And the interpersonal intelligence is the capacity to understand your emotions regulate them, understand the other's emotions, perdón, la and this is the intrapersonal intelligence, and this has to do etc. with uh, persistency, assertiveness, la que and then intrapersonal, the capacity to relate with others. Stress management is the capacity to control and resist uh, events and stressful situations, and rethink the situation, Toma, controlling your emotions, and uh, being able to stop and rethink y different situations. And adaptability that is more related to creativity because it's the capacity for problem solving and the capacity 
fluido, flexible, to be abierto, flexible como veremos luego and en las open the capacity to y flow, as we will el, see in the conclusions. El and finally, the general la mood, eh, the emotions, the emotional state that has to do with optimism Bien. and um, mm. happiness. De esto, vamos a After this, bueno, para nosotros hemos For tomado us, el modelo de, said, de Baron, con lo cual la capacidad de la inteligencia emocional, la capacidad so que tiene be emotional para intelligence is the capacity to understand our own emotions, a los to give solutions to problems, to have a mental balance, to be able to face new uh, en a situations. La About creativity, varias, uh, we were using different definitions. The one given by Dr. Kaufman, eh, el Dr. Stenbeck, Dr. Stenbeck y nos quedamos also, con esta análisis que se ha llevado a cabo hace poco, used this analysis that is, en donde el autor to, los autores was, uh, toman 42 definiciones explícitas when, de lo que es there are 42 explicit definitions of creativity and 120 no references exactas, that are not really definitions but when we see some terms as uh, to, uh, to be able to flow capacity to give responses and they reach to the following conclusions that is more or less general creativity requires a person with certain skills la as flexibility, la la originality, to be able la to flow. Ocurre. Creativity es happens in, eh, que is an intentional process that happens in a specific contexto, domain si or in a specific background. If we are in the field of pues education, creativity that a researcher a needs, for example, is different than a creativity from a writer eh, or las disciplinas escolares o las some, uh, ramas del conocimiento. Uh, teacher, Pero al final esa respuesta, esa solución, different subjects. siempre But tiene response, que ser solución y tiene que ser útil, tiene que ser útil porque hace avanzar a la ciencia, so hace avanzar el science, uh, progress, y siempre son los expertos en progress, el tema they are quienes always the experts in the field, the ones that decide whether this input or contribution is useful or not. Bueno, la otra asunción de la cual the other assumption era que dice los teóricos y los investigadores que la inteligencia emocional influye en la regulación intelligence y influences eh, puede afectar emotional a regulation and it can also have an impact on Por tanto, certain la gente cognitive que es cierto factors que está and therefore en estado people emocional positivo that are in a positive emotional mood will have more Uh, performance in the areas of originality and flexibility. And the research study also states that the general mood, emotional state, will affect motivation and perseverance. There are also two traits, uh, personality traits of creative people. Am I going too fast? Esta es el resumen de los anteriores. This is just a summary of the previous slides. So we just checked on everything that had been done since 2004. And there are different studies. And this is the summary of the chart that I will show next. So the conclusion is depending on the instrument, whether performance-based or self-perception scales as Sutel or Baron or Petrides, depending on that, we get different results. Eh, so, que hay, perdón, varios estudios que utilizaron los inventarios que eh, pues tienen una medida bastante más they, esperadas que si utiliza, por ejemplo, had el more expected results con tareas than de using divergente the que no encontraba correlación EIT entre las tareas or y la medida. That did not Luego find significant eh, correlations between the task and the Esta assessment o measurement. This is a rather complicated task palabras. chart that I will summarize in three words. This is just a review where we see on the top part. Si 
utiliza that la inteligencia emocional if you use eh, emotional con tarea, intelligence with performance uh, uh, task as the misc or eh? if you use the dice inventory resultado results y say y Cebic que no encontraron relaciones significativas no significant relation between their study or in their study between emotional intelligence and divergent thinking en el estudio 3 también la correlación en study 3 the correlation was also very low but Heger un cuestionario de performance de rendimiento no un de un autoinforme no ah, llega a un resultado muy curioso que en la tanda de la derecha también y él dice result, que la empatía es el factor que sale y que es el que predice la creatividad Uh, highlighted and si that empathy predicts derecha, creativity. If you see to the que, right, por ejemplo, we Chan see that Chan las, said so, la social, that social la skills, empathy, the use of emotions que sí, que or utilization of emotions, they are all predictors eh, of da, creativity. Da, da, Dabbar, creo que se pronuncia así, Dabbar dice que solamente él encuentra que es la asertividad, la fuerza con la que tú defiendes tus emociones, the, uh, tus ideas, power with which que you es defend lo your que ideas and emotions junto con, is important, junto con la, together la solución de problemas with uh, problem solving skills él también and uh, y, he also used eh, the baron model. Donde ellos dicen que And encontraron to all, relaciones moderadas, they found moderate pero que relations. La, eh, inteligencia emocional that, that sí que emotional tiene, intelligence cinco dominios, can predict five domains of la creativity. De todos los días, Everyday la creativity, escolar, school la creativity, de, de las artes, la arts creativity, la, scientific, la, la aquella la, la del and teatro, artistic, este es un cuestionario like que tiene eh, Kaufman sobre los dominios Kaufman específicos de la creatividad. Specific domains of creativity, and this questioner was also applied in this regard. And Kaufman did also participate in this study. There is an interesting result from Rami stating a high correlation with flexibility and knowledge expansion. There is another one carried out at Murcia University. It seems to relate emotional intelligence with metaphoric thinking and being able to flow. So we had to analyze all those research studies to start our own with three main questions. Is there a significant correlation between EI and creativity? If there is, can emotional intelligence have an impact on creativity? And the third question, are there differences between the most creative students compared to less creative ones? And here you have the sample as high school students, secondary education students, In, from Murcia in the south of Spain, we, the sample was 95 that were highly gifted um, children, and the rest, they were their schoolmates, years 6 to 12, and we have the mean, uh, this is the questionnaire. Intrapersonal, interpersonal, intrapersonal, interpersonal, adaptability, stress management, and the last. I'm going fast because I don't want to use too much time. And to assess or measure creativity, we use the figurative test from Torrance. This dates back 1954. There's another release in 74, and there are three sub. Test the child with a small um, papel, eh, piece of, eh, verde, of green paper quiera, can move it around, lo has que to draw what, what they want and Con give it a title. Que están a medio, tiene with que those figures in the middle, they have dibujo, to complete them, the, the drawing, and also give a headline. And with the parallel lines that la, are repeated when we assess eh, flexibility of the child, 
este pares de línea paralela y las of parallel tienes lines. que elegir como And quiera o por pares de cuatro o de seis o de ocho y hacer figuras y luego ponerle and make título e incluso historia aquí no se puede dar algunos ejemplos que son bastante originales bueno, el original de está orientado This a test medir was, uh, la fluidez, la flexibilidad, uh, la originalidad y la elaboración. Originality and elaboration. Y para contestar a la primera and, pregunta, uh, ¿hay alguna correlación entre la inteligencia emocional y la creatividad? emocional inteligencia y la creatividad? Eh, weak, o sea, We saw a weak no, correlation no es muy alta is entre not very high la inteligencia between intrapersonal intelligence, the way you control your feelings, eres, how assertive you are, independiente how independent eres, you are, la totalidad de with TTT, the del total TTCT, the test, la característica cuatro, and que with es la elaboración. Uh, features the capacity detalle, to add dibujos, details, etcétera, add etcétera. decoration to your drawings, etc. About the second si question, whether AI intelligence can predict una, creativity, eh, we una, mm, una carried out uh, a stepwise <laughs> linear <laughs> regression, and we could no see era That, uh, eh, solamente era moderada la intrapersonal. Moderate. Mm, the intrapersonal was moderate. predecir la creatividad. In predicting en, en, bueno, creativity. Una, no es significativa, es de muy bajo nivel. It was not very significant of a low level, but at least here we have eh, bueno, some data and we should go on researching it. About whether uh, students or children with more creativity or less creativity are below or above the scores that differences were not significant. But for me, they gave some results that we should go on studying. Those more creative show intrapersonal intelligence. Intrapersonal intelligence autopercepción de los that problemas to do with self -perception con ese problem que ellos tienen to be assertive y también el reconocimiento also, de eh, las emociones de, de los demás acknowledging the others emotions they know how to regulate de, that's very important de part de of emotions del campo de they la creatividad can, uh, do it and that's important for creativity and something else that is also de interesting la, de la inteligencia intrapersonal uh, of intrapersonal es intelligence esa independencia, esa is the fact of being independent and assertive shown by those children about the other variable is the uh, stress management situations that can be uh, worrying those uh, children seem to control their anxiety and they have uh, they say to themselves stop, take your time think and uh, refocus the problem, the emotion or the situation this finding for us has been very important even though we should go on working in this field and about the third question the question was whether there is a difference entre in los niños the emotional intelligence of uh, gifted uh, or talented uh, children compared to the rest of the schoolmates. The result for me was quite relevant and is fluency or adaptability. Adaptability according to Baron has to do with flexibility, the way to change the strategy to, for problem solving or the way to change your emotions. It has to do also with positive attitudes, positive emotions, and it also esa capacidad has to do with the de coger capacity to habilidades, skills, learn habilidades, new skills, gracias, de coger nuevas habilidades y reorientar to, el problema. And refocus es the problem. This is de, de the main um, esa flexibilidad, trait of esa, uh, creativity, this flexibility, this open-mindedness, this capacity to be 
open a, a los compañeros, to listen to their peers, get their suggestions and their feedbacks and analyze them according to their own way of thinking. And the second skill of adaptability is problem solving, their capacity of those to identify problem, define them and look for solutions that can help them implement the solution and also decision making process is important. When you have a problem, there's always some doubt, but you should be firm in order to get a solution. Another of the features is the capacity to search for more information. When they don't have it, they look for it in their base memory and knowledge and they have a capacity for self-regulation. I believe that after all of this you can also you will have the presentation available and as I said sometimes we're not really satisfied and our data were not confirmed in our initial hypothesis but uh, que habiendo utilizado uh, el tipo de medida pues también han llegado, han llegado some other researchers. a esa conclusión eh... So we will see. Our data say that intrapersonal intelligence can predict, could predict creativity. Our data cannot be shown with a statistical significance, but on a second analysis, on a last analysis, we could see that in adaptability, those students are more flexible and they have a greater capacity for problem solving in different ways and using different emotions. Thank you very much. Las preguntas. Sorana me pedía ayuda porque las preguntas son en español. Eh, Aparecen. Fenomenal. Okay, we can see them here. Vale. ¿Cómo se podría explicar? How could we explain? Que en el momento actual in, la creatividad sea aclamada creativity como una competencia indispensable con la práctica inexistencia de formación al respecto en el programa no curricular de los estudios de primaria the, the, y secundaria. Uh, es decir, estamos diciendo schools. cada vez más que la creatividad so es lo que necesitamos, lo más importante, y sin embargo, important en, en el currículo de primaria y secundaria no aparece. En in early childhood education or si pri podéis, primary por favor, education. Responder. Corto para you can más give us a, a no, short answer so, ah, so we can bueno, eh, get as many questions as possible. That, well, that's true, but I have to tell you that este during these last five years, there have been important de, investment de in programs de de against bullying, bullying and improvement no sé of si uh, EI. No, I don't know if the results si are being assessed, and I don't know if the programs are only implemented and then there's no research. It's very hard in Spain to, to get into the schools to make assessment. It's really, really hard. And we know that we have a good feeling with, with many schools who help us. And, and my answer is that maybe, maybe there's an improvement in creativity, but what we don't have is the assess assessment of it. Because I know in Murcia, for example, there are three or four schools who are making a big effort towards creativity. So I might say exactly the same thing. Um, so, so yeah, it's evident that uh, our creativity is something that is valued, and uh, teachers will always tell you, yes, uh, we want kids to be creative and so forth. But uh, in fact, what we see in the facts, uh, whether they actually encourage creativity in the classroom, they op usually do the opposite. So uh, there's clearly, uh, in fact, a lack of uh, maybe training uh, of the you know, teachers and educators to maybe just know what is creativity. 
um, and could help them then encourage it in, the, in their classroom. Mm -hmm. This is one for Baptiste. Mm -hmm. You have spoken about the peaks for certain ages. Can you tell us other cases? The peaks and? For certain ages. Well, for, for poetry and music, that was just uh, illustrative uh, examples. So it's not that we exactly know when is the optimal development for a given task. It's more an illustration that's based on one's development of the different skills that are needed for a given domain or task, then the sort of the peak or the optimal potential for creativity might be at a different point in time for a given individual, right? So it's not gonna be at 14 years old. That's a very classic developmental psychology approach to say at four years old, the child is able to do that. At seven years old, that's the peak of creativity in you know, poetry or in fact, in reality, when you don't use this big uh, machine that you know, put everything into an average development, at the individual level, that's not at all what's, what happens. So uh, the point I was trying to make is that that peak optimal uh, fits between one's potential for creativity in a given task and, and uh, this, this perfect fit might completely vary uh, according to the domain and the individual. Yeah. Tenemos una duda, una reflexión. We have a doubt, a reflection, why creativity tests are based in, in, in art, artistic skills like drawing. Creativity tests continue to be, we have seen several creativity tests uh, based in, in art skills like drawing. You have to feel a circle. Uh, we have seen several things related to, to drawing. Why? Why it's related with drawing and not other skills? Well, this is a test from the 50s that has nothing to do with, with how beautiful the drawing is. The author created this test because during this task he made many experiments in his research group, which was, uh, he had a very long trajectory like uh, Guilford. He saw that those figures make no sense by themselves, but are drawings that make you change your mind, adapt your mind to finish the figures. And to draw something with, with those parallel lines, it's a, a very a test that shows a very flexible capabilities. But if you are clumsy, it has nothing to do. The result is how many times you change the, 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 the drawings, how many different answers you give, how many open your answers are. It has to, nothing to do with your quality of drawing. There's also a bearable uh, area. So there, there are two, two different tasks. These are very two very traditional tests, but we keep using them because they're very useful, even for training. Sorry, once again, I hear The question of the domain is that, uh, of course, for children and adolescents, and even for adults, it's uh, they, they're used to write and they're used to draw. It's something sort of natural. You don't need special skills to do this, these tasks. So these domains, these expressive domains are used because they're more accessible to most people. And we're not gonna ask them to create something, I don't know, in uh, nuclear science because they know nothing about nuclear science. Whereas everybody need, uh, knows how to draw and write, pretty much. Mm -hmm. um, but just again, a precision, and sorry to be uh, a little uh, redundant on that, but these are not creativity tests, once again, but divergent thinking tests, which is a very specific, important brick of the creative potential, but it's not equating to creativity. Uh, in España, in Spain, uh, art and music uh, subjects have disappeared at schools, or we only have one hour per week. How is this going to affect emotional health 
or anti-creativity of future adults. Well, this is something terrible. We, we have been suffering this for many years, and, and, and this is like killing creativity. It's true that we don't have other, other options, but it is also true that nowadays in Spain we have uh, many conservatories, many academies, uh, there, there are activities that children can do at schools and this could be a remedy for this problem but I agree this is this is really really terrible in the current um, educational system that we don't I don't know how long we will have it in Spain but you don't find an only creativity in artistic domain so there might be creativity involved in science and and other other domains that are represented in school now of course if you offer a range of activities like music and dance and and arts uh, in school settings you increase the chances that one kid will find a domain that is a great fit for for expressing his or her uh, creative potential. So it's more in that respect that it might be, you know, a, a bummer. I would like to, to add something. The effect of the Bologna system has been terrible. I don't, I don't know if there are teachers here, but the effect of Bologna is knowledge and knowledge and convergent knowledge. I have a niece. She's not representative, but, but, but I, I was talking about this before. We are studying islands, and when we go to the coast, there are islands, and children tell you, no, that isn't in the book, so I don't need to know that, I don't need to study that. What's Bologna doing? Well, children are focusing on results, the results we need to give to Europe, and this goes against creativity. That's my opinion. There are studies that, that certify performance and attitude of, of uh, students when their creativity is developed. Are there studies that, that certify the, that prove the improvement of performance and attitude of uh, young people when their de, their creativity is developed. Evidence about about that. Um, I didn't cover that. I talked more about the natural development of creativity. But there's many studies also starting from the 70s on how to improve this various aspect of creative potential, including divergent thinking. So you can, if you if you put kids in a room and you have them do a lot of tasks like we showed you, obviously they are going to improve that ability. So um, you can, like, it's definitely measurable improvements in divergent thinking if you give them this kind of exercise. But there's, in fact, a wide range of approach to improve creativity that can be through the teaching methods, that can be through the creative mindsets, right? Like how they think about their own creativity. That can even be through uh, brain stimulation. This is also an increasing line where you just put a little battery uh, <laughs> on your scalp and that increase momentarily at least uh, divergent thinking. So there's many methods that have been val validated and, and robust method to improve at least temporarily uh, idea generation, but not necessarily uh, you know, big C creativity. There's, uh, to my knowledge, there's no method to do that. Yeah. Why adolescents are not creative? I don't share, I, I don't share this, this same Fatima. Adolescents are creative. Well, the second, the second uh, presentation we brought, but we haven't got the time to show it, we used a test, a creativity test of a specific domain to measure scientific creativity. We do have very creative adolescents. Well, the PowerPoint
pointer, pointer I send you, we do have very creative uh, adolescents. And we measured this with, with a very specific group from the region of, of Murcia, which are probably like a really Spanish uh, team. I agree, however, with the, the idea that Bob, Bob Sternberg said that in many times in early childhood, children have lots of different ideas. But when they go to primary education, when they go to middle school, the school kills creativity. No, you don't have to do this. Uh, what you need to learn is this. We have to achieve this. And this is when during the, the teens, we, we will find less cases, but, but I, I, I don't agree. I don't think that teens are less creative. Yeah, teens are extremely creative. Um, yeah. In fact, uh, I mentioned it very briefly, but they, they tend to specialize their interest, and there's this tendency because they have to become adults that you know it's not really welcome anymore to draw and dance and you know express yourself because it's mostly related to you know childhoods uh, play and all of that so now you know you have to be adult and like do like serious business and so it's no time for creativity anymore so there's there's a little bit of that uh uh, aspect also in the fact that you don't really see the creativity of uh, adolescents the same way you you used to see it uh, among children. But again, this is a time that it's they might actually crystallize some interest in specific domains, and that's the time actually to encourage them to pursue the creative outlet that they had uh, when they were children. This is in fact a time when they tend to abandon those outlets. And uh, that can be due to this uh, developmental uh, aspect that I mentioned, but also because adults will tell them, you know, that's the time also when you say, uh, if they get negative feedback, that might actually hurt them a lot, and they will tend to uh, put apart uh, those, those domains. So it's actually a very sensitive time for um, the development of creativity. So. Pues, eh, si os parece, yo creo que. Well, like Baptiste says, I think that teens are very creative. I think it's a good time to wrap up. We have a very diverse group of people and we extract different ideas of, what's, uh, of what happens through the day, which is very different. So I think it's the time to wrap up. It's 10 to 6, it's time to rest a little bit, to assimilate everything, to digest everything. Thank you, Baptiste. Thank you, Lola. It's been a pleasure.